and welcome to a brand new webisode. I actually think I've actually uh, found, I actually think I've actually found, did I just say that? I did. I'm going to continue though. I think I've actually found the right lighting and angle for these. Now there's like some color in the background, which is nice. I'm still in my office. I swear if you watch the webisodes over again, you can probably do a 3D mapping of my, of my office. Um, it's Monday. You're watching this on uh, whatever you're watching this. And uh, I actually did the show from home today. We joked about it a little bit on the air without drawing a whole lot of attention, of attention to it. Um, only because I wanted a bit of a longer weekend. Last week was such a long week. Um, I'm still dealing with this hematoma, this blood clot that thankfully is shrinking, but it's still causing me pain. Uh, so, you know, we thought, hey, let's take one day out. I'll bring the mobile unit home and uh, we'll do the show from the office, which was fine. Um, I honestly preferred to be at the studio. Just the vibe of being in my area in the studio, being there with the crew, with producer Josh and Ross and, and Layla. And, um, I, I'm not necessarily sure that in the future, and I'll probably be eating these words some 20 years down the line, I'm not sure in the future that I would even want to do a show from home. I've worked from home before and it's not fun. I like the, the process of getting dressed and going to work and, and talking with coworkers and, and everything else. Um, and the funny thing was, too, is that the whole attempt to get more rest kind of backfired because for whatever reason, I got all weirded out about doing the show from home because I had never done the show in its entirety from home. I've done breaking news from home and I've done fill-in for other stations from my house, but never my show. So it was really weird. And I ended up waking up all night long, you know, like an old man would. And uh, I woke up an hour later and the show went fine. I was still in pain, so it didn't matter on that front. But um, thankfully, I'll be back in the studio on uh, on uh, Tuesday. I uh, I went to see my cardiologist today. It's actually a new cardiologist. My uh, cardiologist that's been with me since the beginning when I had my open heart surgery back in February of '09. I ended up moving to Oregon, so I've got a new uh, cardiologist now. Really good guy, and they're, they're all good over there at Desert Cardiology. And um, just had my yearly checkup, and it was good. It was good. Everything's uh, sounding good and working well. And I had some concerns uh, because I had never gotten a straight answer on life expect expectancy. And I don't mind sharing this with you, and, and perhaps one day if you have to deal with something like this, you'll, this will help you out. But I, uh, because of my age and what I went through, which was all birth um, defect related, um, my, my valve being two flaps instead of three, and then my aneurysm, I was suffering from high blood pressure, but I'd been suffering from it for years and didn't realize. Uh, but because of my be, being so young and having such extensive work done, there is really no way to forecast what the life expectancy is. But I discussed this with him, and we had a really, really good talk that that valve should last forever, and the graph they put in for my, for my, uh, for my aneurysm um, it's kind of like uh, when you do construction. You sort of put the you put the uh, the framework down, and then you build on top of it. And essentially, my body is and has been building over this graph that's been put in uh, to where you wouldn't even know the graph was there, and and that I should, you know, I mean, apart from me getting hit by a car or something, um, uh, live a normal, healthy life. And I hadn't really gotten um, that succinct or you know specific an answer, which was really meant a lot to me. Um, and, I, and I only bring it up because it reminded me that of, of the important things in life. Um, you know, that is, our, that, that is our health and then ultimately how it relates to, to our families. And, 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 you know, my concern has always been, um, you know, what happens to me if I leave and, 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 and um, at, a, at, a, at a young age... Um, and I'm not here for my boys, and, and that means a lot to me. And given what we've all been through this past week, what I've been through in this past week, not just the lack of value in life, obviously, that took place uh, last Saturday, but the ability for people to make threats against somebody's life, um, not even realizing what it is that they're saying. Uh, and, and, I, and I feel bad for those people. I feel bad for... Uh, uh, James Eric Fuller, who made the threat against Trent Humphreys. I certainly feel bad for Trent Humphreys. He doesn't need to endure that. But today was the first day on the show 
since last Saturday where we actually kind of ventured out and talked about something different. And this is all part of this process. And as I'm putting together tomorrow's show, we're getting closer to not really discussing any major angles in terms of what happened last Saturday. Uh, and that's a good thing. We don't, we don't ever want to forget what happened and certainly want to continue our prayers for those individuals who are still suffering from this. But at the same time, life does go on. It, 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 need, it has to go on. You're never going to find all the answers. The blame game that took place was unnecessary. And at the same time, this political maneuvering to take advantage of what happened needs to move on as well. And, and I'm saying that to myself probably more than I am to you watching, simply because, you know, I talk about what I care about and what I'm passionate about and what matters to me. And it matters to me that you call out the stupidity, the hypocrisy, the irrational um, motives when they occur. But then every once in a while, you reach a point where you go, okay, I've made my point, and some people are never going to change. Some people are always going to be like this, even when they listen to you, even when they hear the show, regardless of how rational I, I might be, they're still going to hear what they want to hear. And eventually you have to go, okay, I said my piece, let's get back to the, to the, to the news at hand, which is where we're heading. It's funny, I, I was talking about the recall of Pima County Sheriff Clarence Dupnik, by this organization out of Utah, which first off I didn't like. If, if we're gonna if we're gonna if we're gonna launch a recall against Pima County Sheriff Clarence Dupnik, then it needs to be by an organization that's here in Pima County. Then comes up the question of is it justified? Well, honestly, I think we are all better served by going to the ballot box if he runs again and voting him out of office than we are by trying to come up with a list of reasons why he can no longer serve his position. Now that's not to say that I think that he is doing the right thing. I certainly don't. I wish he would retire. But if we are going to look at removing him from office, I think it's best to put the energies towards explaining to everybody, your friends, why you feel like he needs to be voted out and put up a worthy candidate to run up against him. So I said this on the air, meaning I do not support a, a recall, right? In the middle of while I'm talking, I get an email from somebody going, One of Hate Radio 104.1 supports, you know, calls for recall of Pima County Sheriff Clarence Dupnik. I, and I just, I email back, I go, were you not listening? Of course you weren't. You heard what you wanted to hear. And that little bulb went off and I went, you know what? Sometimes it doesn't matter. And people have just made up their opinions. And ultimately, for as much as I care about my show, and I do, it's, 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 it's my passion. Okay, I, I, it, it, it is, and I love my career, and I love what I do, and I am blessed to be able to do what I do. But ultimately, you got to stop and go, it ain't worth it dealing with some of you people. Okay, so I'm going to move on because I've made my point. And the most important thing is my family. And that's what this job provides me, is the ability to go and make a living so that I can support my family because they're, they are who is most important. Hope that makes sense. It was great news out of the cardiologist today. I'm in a good mood over that. So now if I can just get this hematoma thing to go away, I'll be in a lot better mood. So uh, Senator John McCain on Tuesday's show, he was supposed to be in studio, but apparently, speaking of family, his son was visiting, so he wasn't going to be making it down to Tucson. So I ripped him a new one and told him to call in. No, I didn't. I said, of course, call in. I look forward to speaking with you. Oh, look, somebody's got a hacky sack with rhino on it. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. Uh, new episodes later on this week. Go by the website, 1041thetruth.com, uh, Daily John Justice Show podcast. We don't have the space anymore to upload the show in its entirety. Sorry. But we do put up special portions when, when uh, we want to make sure you hear something plus an hour's worth of the show every day. And we try to switch up those hours. So, all right. I've said enough. Uh, website, Justice on Demand. That's where you can find this. And where you can find Buddy's Deals, you get those great half price, if not more, sometimes 90% off discount deals available at the website at 1041thetruth.com. Why am I doing this? I have no idea. I'm going to get back to work. Thanks for watching. Bye.